live from the Canadian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gb. The news headlines comes to you compliments. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. When you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never live. Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need. Cause you can look to me, whenever you're in need. Just call on me and I'll be on my way. I'll be by your side, never to divide. To life that shines all over. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. This is the network news for Wednesday, April the 12th, 2023. I'm Stacia Blake. In the headlines, Grenada's Kelsey Morel Ross named Kansas Jayhawk Community College's Female Field Athlete of the Week. Grenada prepares to sign on to the Budapest Convention. Government to introduce estate planning in schools. And High Court matters to resume in-person hearings from Monday. In the region, St. Lucia police continue intensified tactical operations in Vieux Fort. And in international news, Tennessee governor signs order on gun background check. In sports, World Athletics president wants to see more for Carifta. Details right after this message. The first segment of the news comes to you compliments. Soft weave, bathroom tissue. Have you heard about the new soft weave bathroom tissue with Total Hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft Weave Total Hygiene Bathroom Tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island-wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. Good evening, this is GBN's News at 7. The Grenada flag is once again being lifted high. On the heels of Grenada's success at the just-concluded 50th Krifta Games, a former Krifta athlete has left her mark in the U.S. Grenadian-born Kelsey Morello Ross has been named the Central Region Women's Field Athlete of the Year, named the Female Track Athlete of the Region 6 meet after scoring 16 points in two events. Kelsey left an indelible mark on the record books. She has set the best shot put mark for the Barton Community College Track and Field Program. Morell Ross is a former student of the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School. She is currently on a two-year scholarship in the United States. The star athlete's mother, Dashan Morrell, is elated over her daughter's latest achievement. I felt, well, to be honest, you know, um, I already, you know, I always knew that she had it, and I knew she had always had the potential. So, in, in a sense, yes, I was excited, and you know, I was happy, but, you know, this was something that I've always expected from her because I know the type of individual she is. The proud mom says she's always in touch with her daughter, who provides constant updates on her strides sport-wise. She says she's happy that her daughter is able to showcase her ability in a big way where she's at. To me, it's not much of a big difference, but um, I think as, as she's out there and, you know, even the personality that she has, because yeah, she's a friendly or going person, so you no, know, I think anywhere she anywhere she has, I think she'll definitely make it. 
Winning the event on her first toss of the afternoon, Morel Ross bettered that mark two more times before making the most of her last throw. She uncorked a record 16.30 meters to rank third all-time in NJCAA's history. She is also best Fiona Richards 2020 program top marks, 16.28 meters by less than an inch. Morel Ross also had the NJCAA's fourth best weight throw during the season at 16.19 meters, but fell short of that mark at the region meet with a 15.60 meters in place in third. In 2018, Kelsey Morel Ross won her silver medal at the Carifta Athletics Championship in the under-17 girls short put. Corselina John, GBN News. Public engagements are ongoing as government seeks to address and possibly increase the minimum wage. The second in a series of town hall meetings is currently underway at Corinth Government School in St. David. The meeting which targets trade unions, the Employers' Federation, as well as employers and employees, is set out to gather public input on issues related to the general minimum wage, as well as the sectoral, local, and gender-based wages disparities. Dr. Cullen Gilchrist, chairperson of the Wage Advisory Committee, while on GBN's To The Point this morning, says that they do not expect people to remain at the minimum wage level. Looking at a minimum threshold, okay. we are saying no worker should be paid less than that amount, irrespective of the job or the task done. No worker in Greater Caracol and PT Martins as a minimum. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping, I, I might say quickly, that it's more or less, in some instances, entry level positions. We don't expect people to stay at the minimum, all right? We don't expect, we don't expect anybody to stay at the minimum wage. You work your way up. Dr. Gilchrist says that there are some new categories they wish to put into law. Yeah, so the media, media industry, we are going to recognize professionals or entry level um, employees there and prescribe in law the minimum salary, salary payable to anyone working in the media industry. Minimum. Also, there are some other areas. We have the, the, the creative economy, and, and of course, emerging will be new occupation, and those we want to want to set in law. The economist noted that in addressing the minimum wage, it should not just be adjusted, but must be able to live on based on your basic needs. You can't leave it to just the demand and supply to determine the wage. All right, you do have employers who may not be nice. Let me put it this way. Mm. Yeah? I may just choose to, um, you know, to pay you a wage that is that you don't deserve. Yeah. So that that's that's the approach. And and let me quickly say, the 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 the, 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 um, the policy objective driving the revision of the minimum wage is not just to adjust the minimum level of salaries payable in law, but also to do it in a way that whatever we arrive at should be conceptually a living wage. Grenada's minimum wage was last set in 2011. Following tonight's meeting, the next consultation will be in St. Andrew on April 19th, Carico and Petit Martinique on April 26th, on May 3rd in St. Mark, and the series of meetings will conclude in St. Patrick on May 10th. All meetings begin at 6 p.m. Nisha Peters, GBN News. Government is encouraging Grenadians to build and maintain a financial legacy, a legacy which will last for years and maybe even decades after their deaths. Beverly Talisfer has the detail. Success should not be measured by just owning a house and car. That's the sentiment of Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Mike Sylvester, as he delved into the importance of estate planning, something he says some Grenadians do not recognize the significance of. Estate planning refers to the process of planning for the transfer of assets to your loved ones after your death. However, you can't pass on a legacy of financial security unless you first grow your own wealth. Sylvester Investor believes Grenadians learn about estate planning when it is too late. Financial literacy is as important as anything that you do in life. Um, many of us go to life without 
um, knowing these things or knowing too late, you know, um, knowing about investments too late, knowing about estate planning. I mean, one of the, the, the I think the major problem we have in Grenada now is the whole issue of estate planning. People die and they don't live a will. And then you have family fighting over property and all that kind of thing. You, you know, you can't take it to the bank, you can't leverage those assets to be able to build wealth. That's a, that's a major issue. Um, people just don't like talking about that. I mean, even in form of demand assessment, when we ask persons what topics are you interested in, estate planning was the one that came up with the lowest um, feedback. This attitude, the permanent secretary believes, is learned behavior. Government is hoping to shift the paradigm by going into schools to teach financial literacy to children. Estate you know, so it's, it's just part of our, our, um, our psyche, but I think if you start early, um, because many of us are, we are setting our ways, we probably wouldn't change, but if you start early in the school and that becomes ingrained in the school system, as you know, important for you to build wealth, to to, to to have a better life. It's not just about just about working, um, building a house and buying a car, and then you think that's 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 that's, that's being successful in life. I mean, that's it's, it's way beyond that. And I think a uh, financial plan will help you to be able to achieve your financial dreams and, and become uh, financially independent. So, its planning may involve creating a will, trusts, or beneficiary designations, powers of appointment, property, and gifts. Reporting for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. The dry season is upon us, and with it comes the customary increase in fires and bush and otherwise. The RGPF is asking people to be mindful of the various types of fires and the different methods of extinguishing them. Water may not always be the best solution. Water is not always the best extinguisher when there is a fire, so says Sergeant Adrian Panchu, officer in charge of fire headquarters. GBN's news desk was in conversation with Sergeant Panchu, who explained some of the simple mistakes we make that can worsen the situation or even lead to death. Well, it is that the most readily available extinguishing agent is water, and what you would find water in most households. Most persons wouldn't have an extinguisher at home. However, water is not the best extinguisher agent for all fires as you correctly said so if you have an electrical fire um, it could be a piece of appliance or so forth a fan as I was speaking about earlier and that that catches a fire the first thing I normally tell persons to do before attempting to put out that fire with water is try to turn off the electricity if you know the main switch is in most instances because that, that type of fire, electrical fire right once you remove the source the electric the electrical source it reverts to an ordinary combustible fire and ordinary combustible fire can use water to put it out you know, not in a position to turn off the electricity, water would not be the best thing to use on those fires. You run the risk of being electrocuted. Coupled with that is the whole aspect that if you have a fire in this outlet here and you throw water, you can cause a short socket and all the outlets in your house can actually um, blaze into fire. So you'll actually be spreading the fire throughout your house. Right? Sergeant Pan should delve deeper into other types of fires and how we should treat with it. Gas and oil fires, you don't use water because gas and water don't mix, oil and water don't mix. So what would happen is that the water would act as a transport, so you throw it onto it, you would just spread the fire, basically. So you, we, in cases of gas and oil fire, we normally tell persons to try to, um, we say suffocate, so if you have a, a, a damp blanket or so forth, you cover it. Um, one of the things that is most effective is sand. If you go to any service station, you would see about there with sand and before there was um, portable extinguishers sand is what was used if you have a fuel spillage you would use this sand to soak up the fuel and if the fuel is soaked up then it, there's really nothing to burn you sand wouldn't burn right so um, if, if you don't have sand you can use flour those things because once you can soak up the fluid the, the fuel that is burning that is one of the most critical thing one month ago, a resident of Caliste, St. George, succumbed to injuries he sustained while trying to put out a gas cylinder that was ablaze. Here's the officer's advice in situation like this. One more thing that I want to speak on, and it's something that we, we have been getting from time to time, is the whole aspect of um, it's more hazmat, more than a fire, but it's LPG leaks. If you go into your house or you, you, you return from um, shopping or so forth and you get home and you realize the house smells as LPG, one of the main things you must remember is never turn on your light. When you turn on the light, if you go into a dark room and you turn on the light, you would always see a flicker when you turn on the light. There's this flicker that like a spark, a spark. And if there's sufficient LPG in the room, you would actually you would have an explosion. So never turn on the light. You open doors and windows as much as possible to ventilate the area because you want the LPG to get out. 
parents are being cautioned on the importance of child supervision. So you have to ensure that you supervise these children. If you're home with a child and the child is in the next room and you're not hearing them for a little period of time, check them. It, basic things, because these children, if they're left, if they're not, you're not supervising them properly, the basic things of ensuring that lighters and matches and so forth is not within their reach is very critical. Because if they can't reach those things, they wouldn't be able to set a fire. Um, but outside of that, if you're not supervising them, they can pick up a, 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 some piece of metal or something and shove into an outlet. It could be electrocuted as well as it could start a fire. So A home family plan is also recommended. In case a fire should occur during the night, your family would know what to do. Chris Lena John, GBN News. This is News at 7 coming up. Face-to-face -face court hearings about to resume. Stay with us. Home is easy as one, two, three. Thinking about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Grenbeck Community Partnership Initiative. Leicester is the main fishing village in Kareko, and we have lost a big part of the reef system around Kareko over the years. The Grand Lake funding will target relocating by rock structures, and a lot of the reefs that we have lost, we can replace. So I think we're really grateful and thankful to Grand Lake for coming through with that funding for us. Grand Lake, energizing our community. It's faster and easier with Flow Fast Pay. Use your MasterCard or Visa and pay from anywhere. Log on to discoverflow.co slash fastpay and press consumer. Select your country and enter your account number. Enter the amount to be paid and an email address. Enter your credit card information. You'll receive a payment confirmation with the transaction details, along with a receipt to your email address. It's fast, safe, and easy. Flow, keeping you connected. Co-op Bank introduces e-payments, our new e-banking feature that allows you to make payments online hassle-free. Log in securely with biometric technology. Make recurring payments easier with automated scheduling. Save time by paying your bills online. Transfer money to accounts at other local and regional banks. Send wire transfers on the go to anywhere in the world. Or send money to friends or family using Buddy Payment. E-Payments, the swift, simple, and secure way of transferring money. Welcome.
This is Ariza. Your financial freedom. Your future. On Saturday, April 15th, the National Stadium will rock. I'm not going to a circus, I'm not going to a beer. As Q West, Spectrum, and Starboys present Digicel Reggae Fest, the big show. Featuring for the first time in Grenada, Shabba Ranks. Shabba Ranks, the reggae people stalling out. I know my roads and culture. Coffee. Coffee come in like a rupture. And everybody gets captured. Romaine Virgo. Marcia Griffiths. I shall sing as long as I Grenada's own Tamara Songbird, Akeem, and a special international guest. Tier 1 tickets are $120. Limited VIP 500. Includes reserved parking, a variety of food offerings, and premium drinks. Tickets available at box offices island wide or online at gotofet.com. Digicel Reggae Fest. Saturday, April 15th, National Cricket Stadium. Sponsored by Digicel, the bigger, better network. Network, network. With just $2, you can gift yourself with a chance to win the Lotto Jackpot. Now, imagine winning the National Lottery's Authority Jackpot of $62,000. Why pass upon this winning opportunity? Lotto, play and win a lot of money. Happiness is when cooking isn't a chore. Bring happiness to your home. Get up to 30% off on selected items. Get it now, pay later. Whatever your happiness is, we can help. Court, bringing value home. Offer ends April 30th, 2023. Conditions apply. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. about your new home? Think easy. Think a Republic Bank Home Easy Loan. Think affordable. Think convenience. Think Republic. Home is easy as one, two, three. Republic makes home easy. Wow, that was such a breeze. Own your home with ease. So whether laying that first brick or purchasing an existing home, we've got you covered. Republic Bank will get you those keys hassle-free in no time. Home is easy as one, two, three. Apply for a home easy loan today for a chance to win a cash prize. Getting your new home is easy with Republic Bank. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Terms and conditions apply. Almost three years after Grenada's courts began hearing matters via video conferencing due to the COVID-19 pandemic, High Court Matters will resume in-person hearings starting Monday, April the 17th, 2023. I noticed in the 31st of March publication of the Grenada Ga the Go Government Ga Gazette, sorry, said, quote, take notice, Her Ladyship, the Honorable Dame Janice Pereira, Chief Justice, directs that in-person hearings for the trial of matters in all high courts of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court shall resume in full by no later than Monday, the 17th day of April, 2023. The notice advised anyone requiring clarity in respect to the mode of hearing for their matter to contact the registrar of the high court in their member state or territory. The video conferencing option in the High Court was introduced as a result of physical distancing protocols being implemented as part of the measures to control and mitigate the spread of COVID-19. It also provided non-residents with the opportunity to participate in High Court matters virtually via Zoom software. Grenada is positioning itself to ensure that it becomes part of treaties that align with government's tr transformational agenda. That was one of the disclosures made during the CARICOM Impacts Regional Cyber Awareness Sensitization and Training Sessions taking place in Grenada. Sherry Ann Blackman Stephen tells us more. The English speaking Caribbean experienced 2 billion cyber attacks in the last calendar year. 
The CARICOM Implementation Agency for Crime and Security, IMPACTS, is hosting a regional cyber awareness sensitization and training session in Grenada. Prime Minister and Minister for National Security, Deacon Mitchell, said that Grenada, like the rest of the world, has seen an increase in cyber attacks, specifically targeting government institutions, businesses, and critical infrastructure. In the region, the proliferation of cybercrime has become a significant threat to economic stability and security. And cyber criminals are constantly innovating and devising new ways to exploit vulnerabilities and steal valuable data. Referring to Grenada's attempt to bring into law a draft data protection bill, Prime Minister Mitchell says they will embark on public education campaigns on cybersecurity awareness. Collaboration between the private sector and government agencies will be essential to improving the region's cybersecurity resilience, according to the PM. He added that cybersecurity partnerships should be encouraged and announced Grenada's preparation to sign on to the Budapest Convention. As of the last RSS meeting, uh, publicly pledged our commitment to uh, signing on and ratifying the Budapest Convention, um, and so I expect the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Attorney General's Chambers, uh, to be speedily uh, taking the necessary measures to ensure that we, we do so. Um, and that, that is critical to ensure that we can benefit from uh, support from our international partners in this area. The Budapest Convention is a criminal justice treaty seeking to address internet and computer crime by harmonizing national laws, improving investigative techniques, and increasing cooperation among nations. Acting Director of Public Prosecutions in Grenada, Mr. Howard Pinock, noted that a large number of cases before his office has some elements of cybercrime. Cybercrimes pose unique challenges as the internet use of the internet is pervasive it is impersonal and it cannot be detected in the traditional way assistant director strategic services of caricom impacts earl harris called on policymakers and the public sector to reduce the risk of cyber crimes by implementing mechanisms to enhance cyber security the impacts regional cyber awareness sensitization and training in session targets senior officials, ministers, parliamentarians, and policymakers. It began on Wednesday and concludes on Friday at Radisson Beach Resort. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. Grenlac is providing grant funding to improve accommodations at local health facilities. Grenada Electricity Services Limited, otherwise known as Grenlac, has provided a grant for the purchase of furniture and appliances to enhance the quality of life for residents and the level of care delivered by the staff at the Mount Gay Psychiatric Hospital. This is being done through a re recent partnership established with the Ministry of Health. Permanent Secretary with Responsibility for Strategic and Operational Management of the General and Subsidiary Hospitals, which includes Mount Gay Psychiatric Hospital, Richmond Home, and the Community Health Services, is Mrs. Naomi Jeremiah. She confirmed that the recent grant facilitated the purchase of over $35,000 worth of furniture and equipment through the company's Community Partnership Initiative. They call it GCPI. The Mount Gay facility currently houses 129 clients, 88 of whom are men and 31 are women, all of whom are between the ages of 19 and 70. The Princess Alice Hospital, Richmond Home, the General Hospital, and other Ministry of Health institutions have also benefited significantly from Grand Lake's donation. 2023 has been declared the year of mental health and wellness. When parents take to the track during one of their child's athletics events, all eyes are glued to the start and then to the finish line. Let's turn our attention to tonight's GBNI saw. A good eye captures all. GBNI saw is brought to you by Clavision. Life is beautiful if only you can see it. Clavision Eye Center helps you do just that. We provide expert service, classy eyewear, and cutting-edge technology, all with a quality customer experience. See better, feel better, and look better. Meet us today at clairvisiongrenada.com or call 444-0055.
WhatsApp for 090055 or follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Clear Vision Eye Center. Let's see life and the world with a clear vision. It's always heartwarming seeing parents partake in the school lives of their sons and daughters. In tonight's I Saw Submission, fathers are engaged in a special race with their sons at the Christian Union Preschool Fund League. thought is that parents' involvement in their children's school life helps extend teaching outside the classroom, creates a more positive experience for children, and helps children perform better when they are in school. Send us your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp at 405-3052 or our other social media accounts. That was great. That should be Krifta's next event. <laughs> Still ahead, 40th Annual Caribbean Conference of Accountants to be held in Grenada. Stay with us. High impact doors and windows can be yours. Now available at Caribbean Shutters Windows and Doors, Agents 4, Domus Windows and Doors. Get custom-made UPVC products with a 20-year warranty on frames and a 5-year warranty on hardware, complete with installation and so much more. Visit our showroom at 11 Frequente Industrial Park, St. George or call 439-1293 or visit our website at www.domaswindows.com Affordable quality products delivered to you via superb service. We are superb distributors, wholesalers and authorized agents for trusted products you know and love. Like Rika Juices, Pure Heaven Products, Bibin Diapers, New Bright Laundry detergent, Allegra pasta, and more. Contact Superb Distributors at 435-2948 for superb quality and service. Weathergard Pro. For every project, there's only one Pro. A whole new level of convenience and comfort awaits you when you shop at Rise and Shine Supermarket and Hardware Supplies, Griffin Lane, Grenville. Convenient, because we are open Sunday to Sunday. We're even at your service on public holidays. Comfort, because we are easily accessible to the physically challenged. Free Wi-Fi is available while you shop, and bags come at no charge. Everyday low prices and excellent customer care. Adequate parking available. We supply everything you can possibly think of. Family and home supplies, fresh meat, vegetables, and personal care products. All brands of cooking gas at affordable prices. You can send in your order, have it pulled, or pick up express. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, 
fancy and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers. Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. Do you know, when you play the games of the National Lotteries Authority, you are supporting sports, culture, and nation building in Grenada, Karikou, and Piti Macnick? Hi, I am Junior Murray, cricket coach, sports enthusiast, and a former West Indies cricketer. I endorse the games of the NLA 100%. For the past 40 years, the NLA has been funding many sporting activities, including competition for schools and clubs, and for athletes to participate in overseas tournaments, such as the Carifta Games and the regional cricket tournaments. For those reasons, I play the game of the NLA. Even if I do not win, I know Grenada always wins. Yes, when you play all the games, the NLA in turn supports sports, culture, and nation-building activities throughout the Tri-Island State. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. It's faster and easier with Flow Fast Pay. Use your MasterCard or Visa and pay from anywhere. Log on to discoverflow.co slash fastpay and press consumer. Select your country and enter your account number. Enter the amount to be paid and an email address. Enter your credit card information. You'll receive a payment confirmation with the transaction details, along with a receipt to your email address. It's fast, safe, and easy. Flow, keeping you connected. Hmm, and welcome back. The creatives take center stage on Thursday at the Trade Center. The C.R. Williams Performing Arts Academy, in collaboration with the Grenada Trade Center, will feature Guadalupean playwright and actor in a free soul-searching piece dubbed a must-see for all ages. Here's Nisha Paul with the details. The story is about a young man named Joey who found himself arrested by police after stealing his aunt's car. In a cell for the first time, Joey falls asleep and dreams of an accident which happened in his childhood. The one-hour, one-man play is the brainchild of Paco Meja, the Guadalupean playwright and actor who has chosen Grenada as his first stop on his tour to share his work and culture in the Caribbean. Major explains the genesis of the play entitled Chanzi, which highlights the traumatic experiences of a young boy. It's hardly, we hardly talk about it in the Caribbean, the trauma in the childhood, the trauma in the community, the trauma in the same, in, even on, the, on your own family. So I find that topic, it was really, really interested to talk about it because in the Caribbean, we have a lot of suffering like that about the trauma when you're young, other people treat you how the family treat you, how the community treat you. So for me, it was important to talk because it's something, it's something I really f live. I lived this trauma when I was young. So and I and I tend to explain what happened when you feel when you live this kind of trauma, how that can give you a direction, another direction in your life. He is being accompanied on tour by Dominique Hubert, Cultural Cooperation Officer with the Regional Council of Guadeloupe. So the Guadeloupe is part of the, the, the OECS, a member, associate member of the OECS, and they have this project, a competition, which, which called Cooperate with the Countries of the OECS. And there were three candidates from Guadeloupe. Um, Paco was one of them. So we had this project made with the OECS and Paco won with the three others. So the, the regional council financially 
pay the, 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 the project in OECO and then the project in OECO give the money to Paco to have his store. And Grenada, from what I know, is the first country and we hope that it will go on in St. Lucia, in all the countries of the OECO. That's the goal of it. The collaboration is one of the fruits reaped from a long-standing relationship between Major and Dr. Christopher Williams, who is the founder and director of C.R. Williams Performing Arts Academy. Paco Major and I, we met in Jamaica while I went to study in Jamaica. And he also came over to Jamaica to study, but he spoke French, and I spoke French and English and so I was able to translate his work for him, interpret and help him by teaching him English so that he was able to master that and then go and learn his work and present it in English. So we had a good bond that happened there in Jamaica. It never ended so when he went back to Guadeloupe, now he won this competition to come and to tour the Caribbean I would say and he decided to come to Grenada to give back and share the arts with us as a form of gratitude. The occasion marks the first time a Guadeloupian play is staged in the English-speaking Caribbean. Chan Z will be staged on Thursday at 1 p.m. and Saturday from 6 p.m. Major's initiative has received just under 10,000 euros in financial backing from the Guadeloupian government. For GBN News, I'm Nisha Paul. The 40th Annual Conference of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of the Caribbean, ICAC, will be held in Grenada this year. It's the first in-person event by the grouping since the COVID-19 pandemic. President of the ICAC, David Simpson, said this flagship event provides a forum of knowledge sharing for accounting and finance professionals in the Caribbean to participate for mutual and fraternal benefit. And after two years of meeting via virtual platforms, we're back to meeting in person. The conference, hosted this year by the Grenada branch of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of the Eastern Caribbean, ICAKE, will be held from June 22nd to the 24th, 2023, at the Radisson Grenada Beach Resort. Aaron Logie, chairman of the local organizing committee, said that registration for the conference opened on February 28th and encourages members and others interested in attending to take advantage of the early bird specials that end on April 15th. Stay with us, we'll have the sports report for you next. And so it begins, a journey like none other. Every moment has the potential to be unforgettable. Bring home a piece of the tropical green forest with every emerald. Capture the sparkling light of flawless water in a diamond. Make the sunrise and sunsets last forever. With precious colored gemstones, the essence of happiness is in our most precious memories. So when it all comes to an end, bring home something that will last forever. Colombian Emeralds International. Bring home more than a memory. When you need your prescription filled or you require non-prescribed medication, supplements, or all your personal needs, visit Gittins Healthcare at locations on Wall Street Grand Dance, Victoria Street Brendan, and Central Deputy Street Wall. Gittins Healthcare aims to provide an exceptional personalized pharmacy experience. Additionally, children under 5 and adults 55 years and over will enjoy 10% discount on purchases of $20 and over on prescription medication. Stop selling in for less. Visit Kittens Healthcare, where your health is our priority. chances to multiply your playway winnings by adding multi x to your regular playway bets to win up to five times more imagine winning as much as one thousand two hundred dollars instead of two hundred and forty dollars with a ten dollar playway bet by simply adding multi x place your playway bets from one dollar to ten dollars or in increments on your favorite playway symbols or numbers then add the multi x option at the same value to win two times three times five times more
more or free plays. With Multi-X, you must bet the same amount wagered on your regular playway bets for your winnings to be multiplied. Grenadians, value your dreams and win your way as much as five times more. With Multi-X, add it to playway and watch your money grow. Must be 18 years or older to play. NLA, making your dreams come true. Come, 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 come. And good evening, sports fans. Lord Sebastian Coe, president of World Athletics, speaks candidly about the Crifta Games and admits that he would like to see the model used for other world and regional track and field competitions. Within a year of me becoming president, uh, we made uh, an additional uh, grant available through to NACAC to help deliver these games because we know uh, that at World Athletics, we treat them very seriously. They're a part of the development program. Uh, I want to see them grow. I want to see them become uh, even more central in the development of, of young athletes. And I would like other area associations to look at them as a temporary as a model going forward. The World Athletics president is impressed with Krifta's athletes, especially their performances in the field event. I've witnessed many more athletes taking part in field events. I've witnessed a lot more athletes not just excelling in sprints, but I watched some really competitive middle distance, even some marginally long distance events. And I've watched, well, we had Anderson here actually uh, supporting uh, uh, Grenada for the, uh, for the next uh, Carifta Games. He's a classic example. He's a double world champion, but also uh, a multiple Carifta Games winner and that's a field event. Who himself set 12 world records during his athletics career at the Olympic Games in Moscow in 1980. He won gold in the 1500 meter and silver in the 800 meter, a feat which he repeated in Los Angeles in 1984. He retired from competitive athletics in 1990. Two matches were played on Tuesday in the 2023 Classique Lightning Caribbean National Netball Tournament. In the B division, Sprang's QPR came up against SJC. In the end, Sprang's QPR dominated the entire match. At halftime, they had their opponent 30 to 0. And at the final whistle, Sprang's QPR team won convincingly 59 goals to 2. In game two, in the A division match, the Sprang's QPR ladies also continued their winning spree. They defeated SJC 68 to 23. On Thursday, two more matches will be played in the Classique Lightning Caribbean National Netball Tournament at the Tanti Netball Hardcourt. Game one will see Jet Setters Sports Club coming up against Police Sports Club. And in the B division, Brian's QPR Males will face the Jet Setters male team at 6.30 p.m. The long-awaited Grenada Football Association Conference League playoffs have once again been postponed. On Tuesday, the 11th of April, the decision was made following a meeting with the clubs involved in the conference. On March 19th, clubs were informed of a resolution to a long-standing impasse in the Central Conference, which allowed for the completion of two final matches and the start of the playoffs thereafter. During Tuesday's meeting, several club representatives expressed that their teams weren't ready for the next stage of competition and therefore needed some extra time for preparation. After carefully weighing several options and in an attempt to ensure that the best interests of all parties were considered, the GFA took the decision to begin the playoffs on April 18. And finally, the Sandals Under-15 tournament will kick off on April the 22nd, with participation from as many as 19 teams. Over the years, the Sandals Under-15 tournament has become one of the GFA's flagship youth tournaments. Will the 2021 champions, Paradise FCI team, be able to make this year their fourth title in the tournament? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. The tournament is expected to launch next week at the GFA Secretariat. And that's what's been happening in the world of sport.
And now for a look at what's been happening around the globe today. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force, assisted by troops from the Regional Security System, RSS, continues to maintain an intensified presence in View Fort following the enactment of the Police Powers Act. Law enforcement officials have since registered numerous crime-fighting successes, many of which are attributed to the Police Powers Act, as efforts to capture and expel criminal suspects from the community continue. We get more in this report. The Police Powers Act is a welcomed legislative tool that authorizes the Minister for National Security, following consultation with the Commissioner of Police, to designate any location in St. Lucia an area of escalated crime. V4 Town has been so designated to allow the police force to move in and initiate the appropriate tactical operations to neutralize threats to public safety and also capture and detain the criminal suspects along with the accomplices responsible for the upheaval in the community. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre continues to demonstrate his support for the law enforcement officers charged with combating crime in St. Lucia. Prime Minister Pierre again toured V4 and led a delegation through the Bruceville community on April 10th. We have to wipe out that criminality. That criminality must stop. And I make no excuses for it. I'm going to say to you, the government will use all the resources. The police have been instructed to use all available means within the law, all available legal means to wipe off that criminality in this country. The Guyana Teachers Union has expressed disappointment, stating that teachers feel unsupported and that the education officers appear to be looking out for only their own interests. More in this HGP TV report. The teaching profession over the last few months has been riddled with a number of pressing issues, assaults coupled with the absence of salary increases being the most outstanding. A common thread in the stories that go viral involving teachers is the Ministry of Education's unwavering solidarity. However, in some instances where teachers took to the streets to protest the constant attack on their lives and that of their colleagues, they are uncertain where the loyalty of some education officers lie. Teachers are looking out for their own safety, said the Guyana Teachers Union General Secretary Coretta MacDonald in response to allegations that an education officer at Fort Wellington threatened to dock the salaries of teachers who were protesting. Whether the ministry is going to support them or not, teachers are alert and they are prepared to defend themselves and to defend their colleagues. The allegation came on the heels of a protest staged by teachers in Region 5 after the assault of Fort Wellington Secondary School teacher Marlon Dow. Daniels. McDonald said what happened in Region 5 is unfortunate. I think it's very unfortunate that education officers are not considerate, they're not caring, and, and they don't pretend to care for teachers. While disheartening, McDonald noted that she was happy that the chief education officer, Saddam Hussein, was not in support of the statement uttered by the education officer. It's just unfortu unfortunate that some education officers don't understand um, one, where they came, they don't remember where they where they came from, and the two, they have decided that um, because I've arrived at another stage, I can burn bridge or I can burn bridges. Efforts made to contact Region Five Regional Education Officer Keen Adams to solicit a comment on the allegation proved futile. Tennessee's Republican Governor Bill Lee has signed an executive order to strengthen background checks for purchase of guns, and he's urged lawmakers to pass legislation tightening gun laws. Governor Bill Lee's order comes in the wake of the Nashville school shooting that left six people, including three children, dead last month. I believe that this will protect victims, that it'll hold dangerous people accountable and away from firearms, and that it'll preserve constitutional rights at the same time. As I said, the specifics are yet to be determined, and there'll be, there'll be much to work together. And I mean, we will have to work together in order to get this done. But I believe, it, I believe we can. I believe we will. 
we should work to set aside our differences and accomplish something that Tennesseans want us to get accomplished. Nothing is more important than the safety of Tennesseans and certainly the safety of Tennessee children. If we're going to get something accomplished that's here to date been incredibly difficult, if not virtually impossible to do, it's going to require coming together, laying, laying down our previously held positions potentially, and it really is just going to require finding the things that we agree upon together and moving forward with those things, and I, I suspect the chairman will do that. This legislation would impact the broader community, and it would impact people who are a danger to the broader community, not just to schools and children. Situations like what happened in Kentucky yesterday might be averted by a piece of legislation that we're talking about delivering to them. When we return, we'll recap the night's top headlines. for a recap of the night's top headlines. Grenada's Kelsey Morrell Ross named Kansas Jayhawk Community College's Female Field Athlete of the Week. Grenada prepares to sign on to the Budapest Convention. Government to introduce estate planning in schools and high court matters to resume in-person hearings starting on Monday. In the region, St. Lucia police continue intensified tactical operations in View Fort. And in international news, Tennessee governor signs order on gun background checks. In sports, World Athletics president wants to see more for Carifta. If you missed any part of this newscast, there will be a rebroadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online at www.gbn.gd or on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Stacia Blake, and that's the news. Thank you for joining us. Good night.